afternoon, friends. Like this is, see now, just now said that we don't want to miss the 5G bus. So I also didn't want to miss this bus. That's why I'm here to, to kind of do that journey. You know, somebody, I, I was a couple of days back in an ITU conference and somebody made a statement that we are living in exciting times because technology is moving at an extremely fast pace. And, and many other things, you know, how technology is so beautiful, so brave and so fast moving. The only thing which I said was that this is fine and the technology moving at a fast pace is a wonderful thing. But unless technology is able to be deployed for the you know, benefit of mankind, it is really useless. So the whole issue is that there are a newer and newer breeds of technology. And these are really very, very exciting times. But unless we are able to figure out as to how we can leverage technology in our country for our people, this will not be a very fruitful exercise. So I think this is a very timely conference which you have all organized to deliberate on the issue as to what are the use cases for 5G in India, how we can, you know, sort of uh, utilize this, because I have also, we have also realized that India is quite unique in, in many ways. While, for example, in 5G, one of the, you know, oft-quoted application is driverless cars. The question is whether really this is what is you know, useful for our country or not. In my view, it is not. And therefore, but nevertheless, it doesn't mean that we can't use it. In fact, there will be many, many more innovative areas in which we can use uh, this, this technology. So that's, that's one part which I, I think, and, and this is therefore very, very timely, and I must compliment all of you uh, uh, for organizing this, uh, this wonderful conference. I'm not a technology expert, but whatever I have little I have known and I have been told is that while 2G, 3G, and 4G, in a way they were steps, so in a way they were incremental in some sense, 5G is indeed a quantum jump in many ways. So therefore it is not merely an evolution of you know, 2G from 2G to 3G to 4G, it is in a way brings about a quantum jump in many parameters and dimensions. And therefore, it really, you know, makes a complete break from, from the past in some, you know, sense. It is also a time where the information and communication technologies, rather more specifically mobile technologies, which were largely a means of information interchange, and you know, voice or data or whatever, it is now going, its scope is now going to broaden and it is going to become like a horizontal platform which is touching almost every sector of economy. So today, telecom is not only one vertical, it is actually a horizontal platform and 5G enables that to happen. 5G is not merely restricted or to the traditional areas, 5G is now branching off to areas which were hitherto not, you know, using so much the information and communication technology. For example, irrigation, agriculture, environment, health, education, whatever. I mean, many areas which were, of course, using ICT, but they will now start using ICT in a completely different manner. And the pervasiveness of this technology into these areas is going to really become very, very fast. And therefore, besides technology, it is also important for us to educate those sector people, those domains, those departments, if, if I use the Sarkari term, to really figure out as to what is the, those cases. They, are, they, should, they should use this technology. And otherwise, you know, they'll continue to think that this is all right, we are doing fine. We need to educate them saying that, friends, yes, you are doing fine, but you can really change the entire thing if you use this tool, a new tool which has happened, because then it will become much more useful. So that is another part of the story which has to go in. All of us or all of you who are experts in this area, we need to approach and we need to go to those domain people. Of course, there are other, many, many other people will go, but, but I think we need to 
and she con convinced them that here is a great opportunity which we must not miss. Because missing the 5G bus should not only be a concern of the technology people, missing the 5G bus should also be the concern of the domain people. Those in the agriculture sector, those in the health sector, those in the education sector, they all need to figure out as to what are the... Therefore, I was just now discussing with the Qualcomm uh, gentleman, and, and I was telling him, have we been able to identify the use cases which are relevant for countries like ours? Because then, then we'll be able to go and we'll be able to demonstrate. Whatever I have been able to figure out, there are three areas in which, due to which 5G sort of opens up for newer breeds of applications. One is very low latency. This basically enables those time-sensitive applications like you know, driverless cars and remote surgeries or other kinds of things. Some of them may not be very relevant from our context, so that's one. Secondly, it also enables very huge throughput in terms of you know, data transmission rates. And that certainly will be one area, you know, one, one sort of USP of 5G which we can leverage. And the last one is massive machine-to-machine -machine communication. That's also something which we must uh, leverage in, in various sectors of the economy. So I think there is a huge, uh, you know, sort of uh, opportunity which exists before us and, and deliberations like this will certainly contribute. But I think we have to sort of, it should not merely become a slogan that, you know, 5G is coming and we should use 5G and, and do this and have conferences. I think more than that, we have to figure out on the real hard plane of practical implementation of 5G on the field. There are also huge infrastructure requirements if you want to really deploy 5G. So just by saying that these are networks, because these networks now have to wheel or transport much, much huge amount of data. It is true that today our networks are transporting data which is more than US and China put together as our Honorable Minister was talking the other day. Seven exabytes of data in a month. It's a huge data. But at the same time, we should also realize that only 22% of our towers or BTS are connected through fiber. So suppose you want to have huge amount of data from sensors in an agricultural field doing precision agriculture, gigabytes and terabytes of data, and if you don't have the backhaul, then I think it will not work. There will be huge congestion. There will be, it will not be able to deliver what you wanted to deliver. And therefore, I think we need to promote investment in the infrastructure, sect, infrastructure part of this whole story. Because just having 5G without the supporting infrastructure will also not make any sense. And therefore, my view is that we need to promote investment and we need to have infrastructure players, what we typically call IP, uh, what is, uh, I don't know why, how, what that stands for, inf IP uh, licenses or IP restaurants or IP players, which are actually independently building infrastructure for the telecom sector. That's another part which we have to bring in. From a regulatory perspective, I think what is happening is that Current, you know, a couple of years back, it was the telecom service providers who are providing end-to-end -end services, which is basically I was calling you, and you know, therefore, I was handled by one TSP. You were you are customer of another TSP, and the whole communication was taking place. Then came the data, and now telecom pro pipes are a part of the overall data flow diagram, which includes the cloud. And therefore, you got integrated into a larger diagram, and therefore, there were other players which came into play. In the 5G, the paradigm is going to further change. For example, you had an infrastructure which has BTS, BSC, MSC, and all those components. Many of these components are going to become on the cloud. They will become virtual, you know, what virtual function, whatever VFN, the terms which you use, which means essentially that you know, you don't, you're not able to figure out where does that BSC exist. Maybe it'll have some other name. Once you have the cloud infrastructure. So therefore, the network itself is going to become, you know, part of network are going to remain physical, but the rest is 
going to become virtual. Virtual doesn't mean that the physical doesn't exist, but you don't know where that physical exists, where that data resides, where that whole element is. And therefore, the, the number of players in the game are going to increase. And therefore, the regulatory systems will have to sort of reimagine and redeploy themselves to ensure not to throttle the progress, certainly not. But in order to facilitate an orderly growth, I think there will be some kind of regulations will be required. And we at TRAI, therefore, are also cognizant of this fact that we have to learn these new stuff and new parameters to be able to effectively and, and more appropriately regulate this, this new kind of thing which is going to come in. So I, I mean, from our perspective, we can assure that we will not be becoming the obstacle or, or regulator in a monitor sense, but we will certainly facilitate. Another part, and, and I'll end here, that spectrum, which is required for 5G, of course, we have complete decoupling of the spectrum from what use it can be put to. So therefore, we are not saying that this spectrum is for 5G, this is for 2G, this is for 2, 3G, because the spectrum is delinked from the uh, sort of technology, underlying technology which you use it with. But normally, you know, understanding 3300 to 3600 and all those higher bands and that spectrum, we have given recommendation to the government and as and when required, maybe some other bands you require or the industry will require, we'll be very happy to ensure that spectrum availability does not become a constraint for deployment of the technology. We have also assured the Department of Telecom, and yesterday only I had a meeting with the Secretary of the Telecom Department, where we have said that any other kind of advice which is required for example, we have the new digital communication policy wh whose draft has been published and which is uh, going to be sort of deployed or accepted by the government in the near future. Whatever are the, those components of that policy which requires further detailing and further advice, we have assured that we will be coming up very, very fast with these advice, consultations, consulting all the stakeholders, as we always do. We always consult all these stakeholders and then come up with our sort of recommendations or regulations or orders or whatever that we will be doing. So we will be at our, at our on our part, we'll be playing uh, our part regularly and, and, you know, ensure that that we don't become a bottleneck in the process. Thank you very much. <laughs>